Good evening, everyone. Once again, apologies uh, for starting a few minutes late. As I explained earlier, <coughs> the uh, developments in the legal fraternity have been quite dynamic. So the lawyers had to brief the president, and uh, they've done so now. And the president is ready to, <coughs> to give the national address to his people. Mr. President, the floor is yours. <coughs> thank you, thank you very much, uh, <coughs> Baba. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And for me. Oh, I'm going to share. Sorry, Bob. I forgot to do introductions quickly. Flanking uh, the president here and his daughter are the lawyers. Advocate Dalimbo for senior counsel. On this side is Advocate Masuku, senior counsel, uh, Baba's daughter, Kududu, and the man that did no introduction. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> uh, may I start by greeting members of uh, the, the media gathered here and uh, thank you for <clears throat> ensuring that the people of South Africa, the continent, and the world get to hear my posture as regards the Kampepe <clears throat> judgment that sentenced me to jail without trial. <clears throat> mm -hmm. <clears throat> Please allow me <clears throat> to also thank all those people and peace-loving people indeed who have shown <clears throat> resolute support, not only for me, but uh, <clears throat> for the rule of law and justice. <clears throat> I must also hasten to acknowledge and appreciate the Constitutional Court for its recent announcement where it indicated that on the 12th of July it will give me audience. <clears throat> I trust that the peace-loving people of South Africa will support me until this matter is concluded in a manner that ensures that rule of law and the Constitution will reign supreme. I fully agree with the Constitutional Court that our democracy was achieved through the sacrifices of men and women who gave up life itself. But they did so exactly so that things like detention without trial, should never again see the light of day in South Africa. The struggle for a free South Africa was a struggle for justice where everyone is treated equally before the law. 
constitutional democracy should mean no one, not even judges, are above the law and that the constitution is the supreme law of the land where any act or conduct not consistent with the constitution is null and void. It is against this background that I <clears throat> applauded the that I applauded the second judgment <clears throat> which was dispassionately dispassionately objective, fair, and consistent with the provisions of <clears throat> the Constitution, particularly Section 12.1b, which prohibits detention without trial. In the interest of time, Please allow me to quickly make a few points. Firstly, contrary to the mainstream, <clears throat> the mainstream narrative and propaganda against me, I've never refused not to appear before the State Capture Commission. In fact, the disagreement or discomfort from my side arose when I was <clears throat> in the attendance at the State Capture Commission. It is my honest view that my past relationship with Judge Zondo began to manifest itself in a manner that caused him to treat me unfairly and with bias. It is in fact incorrect to refer to the State Capture Commission as the Zondo Commission. For an example, if something happened to Judge Zondo, the Commission would still continue. If a number <coughs> of his, if a member of his family was implicated in state capture allegations, he would necessarily have to recuse himself. I made a submission to Judge Zondo pointing out exact <clears throat> details to support my contention that he is not neutral. He also made his own submission to <clears throat> disprove my contention and subsequently ruled that his own submission is victorious. This then meant that I was now forced to appear before somebody I have accused of bias and 
conflict of interest. As things stand right now, that issue is being adjudicated in a court of law. And I'm still awaiting the outcome of <clears throat> that court. Had Judge Zondo simply recused himself and allowed my submission to be made to somebody <clears throat> neutral, the people of South Africa would have heard <clears throat> my version as regards all <clears throat> the unsubstantiated allegations against me. All I am asking for is fairness and consistency. Jacob Zuma is not the first person to have a reason not to appear before this State Capture Commission. I must not be understood to be <clears throat> condoning any acts or conduct that seek to deliberately frustrate the objectives of the Commission. The only point I seek to make is that is how the State Capture Commission responded to some of the individuals who defied the calls. <clears throat> to appear before the commission. Some of those individuals include prominent names in the private sector who were not persecuted with <clears throat> subpoenas. Even the Constitutional Court was inconsistent in a whole range of instances, including denying direct access to cases in, 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 involving life and death matters, but granting direct access for <clears throat> squabbles which could have been referred elsewhere. The fact that I was lambasted with a punitive jail sentence without trial is something which should in induce a sense of shock to all those who cherish freedom and the rule of law. The rule of law does not mean dealing harshly with those you may dislike for whatever reason. Thirdly, I'm very concerned that South Africa is fast sliding back to apartheid type rule. I am facing long <clears throat> detention without trial. Elsewhere, <clears throat> the Secretary General of the ANC has a banning order prohibiting him from addressing meetings. We have a level four lockdown 
with all hallmarks of a state of emergency and the curfews of the 1980s. The only difference <clears throat> is that we only use different levels like contempt of court instead of detention without trial, but the substance is exactly the same. Being jailed without a trial is not different to the apartheid's detention without trial. <clears throat> Fourthly, I believe in the rule of law. I fought and went to prison and exile so that there must be justice and the rule of law in our country. No honest person can accuse me of being an enemy of the rule of law. Consistent with this point, I am pursuing peaceful and constitutional methods to deal with this situation by approaching the courts again. I have been in and out of courts <clears throat> for the past 20 years and regularly attending to all my court appearances except if the doctors advised me otherwise. That is why everyone was shocked when Judge Pillay issued a warrant for my arrest when I was too sick to appear in the court where she was presiding. The same judge, Pillay, was part of the Concord panel, which ordered my detention without trial. No reasonable person can believe that all members of the majority judgment did, uh, <clears throat> did their work guided only by the ideals enshrined in our constitution. Finally, I'm not scared of doing, of going to jail for my beliefs. It will not be for the first time. I will be a prisoner of conscience. I have already spent more than 10 years in Robben Island under very difficult and cruel conditions. Even then, I was a prisoner of my conscience and beliefs. However, I have a duty and obligation to ensure that <clears throat> the dignity and respect for our judiciary is not compromised. <clears throat> By sentences that remind our people of apartheid days, sending anyone to prison without trial is a travesty 
of our <clears throat> justice, particularly if you cannot even identify the case number of your case. Even today, I call on all my supporters to use peaceful means to protest against this injustice. I really must be clear. I'm not asking for sympathy, but justice. My age and health condition and any other <clears throat> mitigating circumstances were not considered when the <clears throat> imprisonment was decided. My family and my comrades insist that these injustices need to be exposed. If it was up to me, I would once again go to jail for my beliefs as early as today, without, as early as today, whether I come out alive or not. But I have never <clears throat> operated as an individual, and I am therefore guided by views of my family and comrades. I wish to thank my legal team for going the extra mile to challenge these many injustices. <clears throat> Even murderers, serial killers, bank robbers, and child molesters mm. are granted their fair opportunity to give mitigation after conviction but before sentencing. In my case, <clears throat> a strange procedure was adopted by asking me for mitigation before I was found guilty of any crime. It cannot be that there is Zuma laws in South Africa. <clears throat> only Jacob Zuma is only <clears throat> the only Jacob Zuma is told that normal procedures are not applicable. Only Jacob Zuma is told that appeal processes are too <clears throat> protracted. Only Jacob Zuma is asked to give mitigation before being found guilty. Only Jacob Zuma, <clears throat> or only Jacob Zuma name is mentioned that the highest court in the land agrees to be a court of first instance in criminal proceedings. Sending me to jail during the height of a pandemic at my age 
is the same as sentencing me to death. The death sentence was declared unconstitutional in South Africa in 1995. As a result of my own sacrifices and those of millions of South Africans. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. President. We're now going to go through a, a round of questions. I know your hand. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to do it with this protocol. We're going to start with the Nkanda people that are here and check if they have a question. They are our hosts. Okay, here. Yeah. Uganda <laughs> Media, any question on your side? They don't have a question. Just want to make sure that we respect them, that they are hosts here. <laughs> right, then we're going to go local and then we we'll go international. From the local side, I've got News 24 here. They say they've got a breaking news question. Over to you, Bully. <laughs> Uh, uh, just take it off a little bit when we are talking because I may not hear. No worries. Uh. Will you also be directed at Advocate Dalimbo for um, the State Capture Commission has opposed the former President Zuma's urgent application for an interdict, mm. staying as a risk on the basis that um, you know, the application for the stay of his arrest is a constant continuation of pertinent of a pattern of abuse of court process by Mr. Zuma, and courts should not entertain such abuse any longer. It also says um, Mr. Zuma does not satisfy the requirements for an interim interview. So we just want to find out what is your take on that and what will be the process for you. Okay, that's one, one person, one question. And also, just so it's clear, we're not here to run a trial. Okay, <laughs> so just be uh, mindful of that. I'm going to just take local for now. Uh, SABC? Uh, no, uh, I'm not going to say this, I'm actually glad no from the witness newspaper. Okay, go ahead. Yes, uh, former president, my question is uh, around activities that have been happening here outside your home uh, since Wednesday. There have been instances where some of your supporters uh, fired shots in the air and they completely dis disregarded COVID-19 uh, restrictions. Are you going to use this media briefing as an opportunity to reprimand them and condemn their conduct. Okay. Just one question, please. I'm Sihle so from Independence Media. I think mine is the most simple question here. You said they are not afraid of going to jail. They might have run into the concourse again. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, so we'll from the news. Um, my question to the President is, uh, Mr. President, you have clearly stated that um, uh, the judge is... Alleged... Just raise your voice, please. Okay, okay, no problem. <coughs> Maybe I should just come a little bit <coughs> Mr. President, you have stated that the courts, I mean, the judges in particular, have been fair towards you. With this research application, do you believe that maybe this time around they're actually going to try it because they're actually... That's my question. Mm. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Songala from News of Africa. Uh, Mr. President, you are saying today that you feel that the, you appreciate the, and acknowledge the call court for affording you the opportunity to present your case I mean, and uh, remembering uh, the tone of your letter to them when they invited you to address them, where you had said that it was a gimmick. Um, do you, seeing your change in tone, do you not think, do you now believe that you owe the Constitutional Court an apology in how you treated them? Okay, how many questions have we got now? Okay, I think I note the questions that uh, the first round. Okay, let's just maybe just attempt to answer the questions here. And the, the lawyers are here to deal with the technical issues. Okay, Advocate Wok is going to work with the President here to, to choose which questions are answered by who. Advocate Mbou, which ones are you asking or are you taking? Okay. 
<laughs> no, no. Firstly, we live in a country that we believe takes a very keen interest to fairness and law. This is a country that we believe in the law. We also believe that uh, uh, some <coughs> uh, people at times interpret laws in different ways. That is why when people are convicted in lower courts, they go, they appeal to higher courts, hoping <coughs> some judges or those who will be looking at the matters will be able to exercise and interpret the law correctly. It's a system in the country, open for everyone. I think from our point of view, given the manner in which <coughs> uh, this judgment was, it was important <coughs> to react to it by saying, look at it again. Is this what you actually mean? <coughs> there is nothing wrong if you do so. We are not also asking for uh, an, or wanting to give an apology. We are exercising <clears throat> your right as a citizen in this country. Uh, whether whatever view you have, whether you fear or not fear uh, <clears throat> the courts, but it is your right to do so, so that you are satisfied or the judges look at <clears throat> what they have done themselves because here you can't go, you can't go higher than the constitutional court. In other words, to <clears throat> indicate to them the issues that you feel were not fair or the, 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 their judgment had not considered every other thing. There's nothing wrong in doing so. Whether we are afraid of prison or not, but we have got it to do so to ensure that the law has been looked at thoroughly and if you go there, you go there because they've done. They might say, we stand on our views, fine. But they might even realize, particularly in this case, there were two <coughs> views about, it, about this. It was not a unanimous view that we're all correct. And others, though, who, who disagreed with the majority, I think raised a very serious sound legal issues and constitutional issues. And I don't think there is anything wrong then if you say, guys, consider what you did. Is it what you think is the final final? Or you could correct your mistakes. <clears throat> and I, I, here we don't want to get into those details. But this is what made us to say, consider this, whether you cannot reduce it or change it. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. The, to the first question, well, firstly, I, I wish to make it clear that, uh, as you know, ordinarily advocates do not uh, speak to the media, uh, but uh, Advocate Masuku, SC and I will deal with some of the issues because of the extraordinary circumstances that are facing the country. Uh, we asked for special permission uh, from those who control us so that we can deal with the issues here. And that is because of the situation that everyone can see outside which might uh, escalate into something that we all do not want to happen. As President Zuma has said, that is why he has chosen to take the peaceful route of going back to the courts, whatever his misgivings might be. And we, as officers of the court, want to support <coughs> that stance. <coughs> but as far as the question is concerned, um, let me just, just say this. We are here just to clarify because there's a lot of confusion about, you know, there are two cases, one is in the Constitutional Court, one is in the High Court, just to clarify how that works. 
However, we are certainly not going to go into the merits of those cases or whether those cases are strong or weak because it would be unfair to do so. That will be done in court when our opponents are there to answer for themselves. So we cannot uh, get into the nitty gritties of the cases. <coughs> Simply to say that yes, to your direct question, we have noted that um, the Minister of Police, the Commissioner of Police, and the President of South Africa have chosen not to oppose the application that we have brought on Tuesday to the High Court. They have filed a notice to abide. And yes, you are correct that the only persons who are opposing that application uh, to stay the arrest pending the Constitutional Court application is the Commission and I think the Amicus Curiae, or what is called the Friend of the Court, the Helen Sussman Foundation. Uh, we have only seen the affidavit of the, of the Commission, and as I say, we will deal with it in court. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to take, I know you, I just want to take hands from international media now. I will still come back, guys, local. Raise hand. My question was not answered. Mine is well. Yes, was answered. What was your question? Apologies. No, it was about the firing shots. Okay, firing shots. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. And yours? One of the apologies was answered. Mine was whether he feels he should be able to put in a comment. Yeah, it was answered. Yeah. But they don't like the answer, but it was answered. <laughs> okay. <laughs> People firing shots? Yes, and also disregarding COVID-19 restrictions. Mm. And uh, uh, I was asking the former president whether you want to use this media briefing to remind and condemn the supporters that we have been engaged in such a thing. Well, I'm, I'm not sure whether that question <coughs> is helpful to me. Uh, who is feeling very much aggrieved because the reaction of the people tells the story <clears throat> that they are not happy with what the court has done. And I think it is their own reaction that they make which I think must tell all of us that we must always do things correctly. We must not provoke people. And that question might be <clears throat> useful to other people. <clears throat> because I was not responsible for what has happened. I was not responsible. If it was me who had said, look, do this, I would be answering the question maybe for very directly. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> okay, I want to take questions from international media. I will still come back to you guys locally. I know you. It's permanent, I know you. Anybody? International? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Rain. Sure. Michelle Clemente from the Asian Foreign Press. Just take off the, so that I hear you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mr. President, for coming to address us as the media. Mine is really a question of clarity. Um, will you be handing yourself over to, to the police today? And secondly, around the issue of the court cases. Can you give us clarity in terms of, um, are they two separate cases? How is it going to work? You just need to understand the technicalities of what's going on. Thank you. Okay, maybe let's just take them as they come, so that mm. we, don't, we don't get confused. Start with them. Mr. Will President. Will be Will you be <laughs> <laughs> You want me to hand myself over? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. I, I think the initiative that we undertook <clears throat> with my team uh, to submit papers to the Constitutional Court <clears throat> that they must reconsider uh, their decision. And they are accepting those papers. It meant that, therefore, they can't accept the papers and expect me to go to jail. It means they are opening up 
a space for us to interact on these matters. I think if that is the case, <clears throat> no need for me to go to court okay. today. <clears throat> No need for me to go to jail today because we are now engaging with the Constitutional Court. Yeah. <laughs> the other part of it. Yes, I will. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. The. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Very. In a dry fashion, what has happened is this. Two applications were launched on Friday, right? The first application was to the Constitutional Court for the rescission of the order and judgment that was given on the 29th. Now, rescission is just a legalese word. It simply means that that decision must be set aside on the basis of errors and omissions in the judgment, okay? Now, the second application was brought to the Peter Marisbeck High Court. That application is going to be heard this Tuesday. The first application to the Constitutional Court was a normal application. The second one is an urgent application. Right? The urgent application was brought to sit down on, to, to sit on um, Tuesday simply because, as you know, that there were two deadlines. There's one of today, then there was the other one of three days thereafter for the police. And its intention was to suspend the arrest order or to interdict the Minister of Police and the National Commissioner from executing that order. <coughs> Pending the application in the Constitutional Court and an application to render the um, the gap in the Criminal Procedure Act unconstitutional insofar as it fails to allow for a trial in situations such as this. In other words, where direct imprisonment is being asked for by the complainant. So that's the relationship between the two applications. The one on Tuesday, the one that gentleman was talking about, which is only being opposed by the Commission and the Helen Sussman Foundation, is the one for the interim stay. And as the President Zuma has just said, that was before the intervention of the Constitutional Court yesterday, which said that it would hear the Constitutional Court challenge to its decision on the 12th. So that's the, just the nature of the litigation that will take place in the next eight days. Thanks for the clarity. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. President, um, some of your supporters have made it clear that under those... Beg your pardon, just introduce yourself first. Oh, sorry, yeah, John Eligal, New York Times. Mm -hmm. uh, some of your supporters have made it clear that under no circumstances <clears throat> will they let the police come here and take you. If after all of your appeals are exhausted and the decision stands, one, will you freely turn yourself over? And two, what would you say to your supporters who say they will not allow anyone to come and get you? Well, I'm not sure whether I should answer for my supporters. My supporters have their own view about this matter. And, and they are expressing what they would think or they believe they will do. How do I answer that when it has not happened? I think it is difficult. You want me to speculate? I don't think I'll be able to speculate what happens. Or will, will you freely turn yourself over? Sorry? Will you freely turn yourself over if after your appeals the court keeps the order for you to go to prison? Will you freely turn yourself over? No, even that question as well. <coughs> it's not that. <laughs> it's a speculation. <laughs> okay. Uh, colleagues, can you operate like this? Until I point at you, don't volunteer a question. Otherwise, it can be chaotic. Can you please have just that order, that discipline? I'll get to as much of you as possible. Number okay. One. My name is Moxana Sewa from BBC News. Mr. Zuma, for a person who has repeatedly reminded us of your role in the fight against apartheid and you being jailed, do you not think that it is disingenuous of you to, mm -hmm. co to conflate 
the apartheid state of emergency to the COVID regulations that we see now because of the spike of COVID-19. And secondly, you've made an, 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 uh, an, an argument about your health in your plea to the constitutional court. But is that not contradictory to your behavior here? You're not wearing a mask now. You are not wearing a mask outside yesterday when you were with your supporters. Why did you not tell your supporters or plead with them not to... Okay, before the president responds, the reason I'm taking questions one by one is so that there's absolute clarity in the question. It's not an opportunity for any of you to make speeches. So please keep your questions brief and to the point so that the president can respond. I think you're not fair for what you've been saying, but maybe the president has heard you. Mr. President. No, thank you very much. If, if we have listened to me not only now, I have criticized <clears throat> part of government very seriously. And I've said, apathy dealt with me and others. If they wanted to deal with you because they either called you, you are a terrorist or whatever, they dealt with you and you only. This democracy deals with my children. They can't be employed. They harass their banks, their, their, their accounts in banks. Apartheid did not do that. And I'm just stating the fact as they are. I don't want to go further. I think that answers you. I deal with the situation as it comes. And I can't say because we are in democracy today, and therefore constitutional court judges have a right to undermine their own constitution that they are guidance of. I don't think we want us to be discussing those matters a lot. Suffice to say, even apartheid, when I was discharged, they took me out. This government, this government, I've, my case that is over 20 years ago, has been dismissed, I think, three or four times. It's persistent to arrest Zuma. I don't think there was as persistent with the <clears throat> apartheid. They arrested me, give me years, whether I was happy or not, I was there. They did not pursue me as it is. They did not harass my family. It's a fact. I don't want you want us to be emotional about it. Thank you very much. Right. I'm still on international media. Next one. Yes. Uh, my name is Mawande from Sunday Times, the Zimbabwe edition. Uh, for President Zuma, don't you think that the events of this week send a message that you are undermining the authority of the current administration as that as the President said on the post? Obviously, the photos. Is no longer only a legal dispute, but it's also political. All <laughs> This one. No, you see now. No. One, three. Have you met the top six uh, in, with regards to the current situation and what is there? The teeth was it just got. No, I, I don't understand first, my brother. Why do you say, <clears throat> don't I think that the events that have taken place undermine whatever, the government, whatever? Did I start any event? <laughs> Me. <laughs> Did I? No, no, you did. So why do you ask me? But it's about your name, President. Hmm? It's about your name. No, if it is about my name, is it my business? <laughs> <laughs> no. It is because... Constitu it's wait, my brother. Constitutional court made a judgment. It's not me. Why should I then answer? Is that good for the country or not? <laughs> I just set your questions correctly, my brother. <laughs> 
Okay, 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 okay. We're not having a dialogue. We're having a question and answer. You've asked your questions, they've been responded to. No, but the top six questions. The NEC question. Have you met with the top six? No, please. Oh, have you met with the president? Please, no. Please. <laughs> I'm in trouble. You were asking me questions that are just for you, for your whatever. I mean, why do you ask that question? Why should I meet them? Why should they not meet me? I, I will say it, my brother, it's enough what you have asked. I'm just telling you I'm not a cause of this problem. You are now asking me to respond on every other thing as if I'm responsible to sentence Jacob Zuma to 15 months in jail without, without uh, what is it? Whatever. No, I wanted to say without even... A suspended sign. Uh, 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 appl uh, uh, appealing or whatever. Yeah. Mm. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, okay, we'll come back to you. Can we come back local? It's permanent. Yeah, but it's permanent like what we have with EMCA. It's not only a lot of people who live in the Nwakola, but we have a lot of people who live in the Nwakola. My sequence is going to go on to the other side of the road. My sequence is going to go on to the other side of the road. My sequence is going Uncle <laughs> 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 No, I was going to go to the hospital. 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 My name is Sibiru Makanya for SABC TV News. Amalala, you've raised a lot of uh, uh, concerns about how some of the judges in this country are treating you personally. I just wonder what is your frank and honest view of the state's power judicial? <laughs> well, I am going to go to the court of Kulumizulba. I don't want to be critical of the judiciary just out of nowhere there is something wrong with our judiciary our judiciary i'm not saying the entire judiciary is useless or whatever if you have noticed to me there are judges who have made public remarks that if zuma comes here he will never be acquitted and it's not one judge more than one judge now, there's no judiciary that can make such remarks. And you think there is, some, there is, there is everything fine with the judiciary. <clears throat> Even this judgment, if you listen to it, it's an angry judiciary fighting not the fact that I, I was faced with the question of uh, <clears throat> a naughty, uh, uh, going to court or whatever. But dealing with my, <clears throat> my, my remarks that I made as me on what was happening and must be punished for that, which means if you give your <clears throat> freedom of speech, you must be punished for it. That's what this judiciary, in my listening of the judgment, that's what they were saying. Zuma said this, Zuma said this. That was not a crime. Why must I be punished for it? Is that a judiciary I think we should have? I don't think so. They should have said, contempt of court, this is it. Even the sentence for the <laughs> contempt of court is actually described. It is there. But they say, no, 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 no. With this one, we give him more than that. Out of 
I don't know. If you think that is a judiciary that is healthy, I disagree. It's not healthy. <clears throat> okay. Nomsa, I want to come back to you. But as I do, I just want you to appreciate one thing. Speaking to somebody that is probably the age of your parents, if not older. So if you don't contain your tone and maintain the core of question, it's going to be a problem. Ask any question you want to ask, but try and make sure that you ask it with respect and decorum. Over to you. That's fine. Please carry on. Right. My question, sir, was that you're making the argument about your health and your plea to the constitutional court. But your behavior has been contradictory um, to that plea in regard to you saying that being sent to prison at your age and because of your health, it would be cut amount to be uh, 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 sentenced to, to death. Do you not think that you should have played a role, sir, in speaking to your supporters, in leading by example, by wearing a mask, for example, by telling them from Tuesday when they started gathering here that they too should make sure that they do not uh, break a lockdown regulations? Thank you. Okay, okay. The president is open to answer, answer the question for two reasons. Number one, I think it's, it's important for you to do a bit of research first and understand that sometimes when you've got a medical condition, there's an issue between you and the mask. So you take it, you put it on, you put it off. Doctors regulate uh, that kind of a thing. So the fact that the president is not wearing a mask might very well be a medical condition, which is a confidential thing which you can't disclose it and all of that. So I don't think we'll go that way because also, I had tried to be fair to yourselves here. I had asked you guys here to arrange one feeder situation near camera, but you have failed to do that as media. Look how many are you here. You yourself are breaking the regulations. Mm -hmm. And I had given you the opportunity to make sure that you stick to the regulations on the Twitter account of the foundation. But you have not done that, but you are pointing fingers. Mm -hmm. Just don't go there. Yes, ma'am. Hi, thanks. Um, Leila from the Daily Maverick. Uh, will we be attending the AMC's AEC meeting this week? And have you been vaccinated? <laughs> have you been vaccinated? Shall be the Yo. No, not yet. Not yet. I have not yet vaccinated. And are you going to the ANC's NEC meeting? Is that your business? It's mm. <laughs> so, 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 so my question. No, absolutely. I, I don't understand. Because I'm an NEC member. Mm. It depends when I go, whether there's anything. <clears throat> That's why I'm asking you a very rude question. Is it your business? <laughs> you should ask other questions. I, I see. No, no, wait, wait. I know you're burning. I just want to check somebody that has not asked a question before. Otherwise, to repeat you and somebody else has, the other people get more than one opportunity. Yes, sir. Introduce yourself. Mr. President, is there any... Uh, reasons as to why you are not, you're not feeling comfortable to appear before Zondo. Is there any personal relations that, or personal issues that are between you and Zondo that made you feel that you are going to be just, just as Zondo will be a uh, uh, bias towards you? <coughs> che, we dealt with this matter in public <coughs> at the commission. You know exactly what I said. There's no issue between me and Zondo. I said, and I, I, I said it also earlier, <clears throat> Zondo became uh, bias. Not because there's anything between me and him. We know each other for a long time. Whatever, how we know each other, I don't think that's an issue. The issue was that he became bias. And I said, Please recuse yourself because you are now past. I don't trust you that you are going to deal with me as you would have been dealing with any other person. That's all. I don't think it goes beyond that. Okay, I think we're going to, about to close now. Okay. I'm going to take a burning hand. Thanks, man. Uh, see how we saw It's just in relation to the Zulu family. Um, 
My question is, um, when the late king passed, um, we saw the King of Prayers that totally provide support, um, yet now during this time when obviously he's going through, he's going through, we've seen the Zuniro family criticize um, those who are here, who, who just support themselves to be among all the and also criticizing those who um, have gone out and come out to support um, the So my question is, um, how did this make him feel, and what is the relationship between him and the Zuniro family during this time? <laughs> I don't know whether I had the, I had the everything. No, he is saying the royal family has uh, raised some objections in terms of Amabuto doing whatever they've been doing in support. And he is saying, how does that strike you? And what is your relationship with the, the royal family? If I summarize you. <laughs> I'm a Zulu. <laughs> The Zulu kingdom is, 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 is my Zulu kingdom. <clears throat> I'm part of whatever. Now, <clears throat> what comments they make about the Amabutu, Amabutu, by the way, I'm part of Amabutu. When they come to me, they are coming to their colleague. How then did they feel about it? I don't think it's me to answer. Why should I? I mean, I don't know. What, what makes them to make the comments they made or whatever? I did not hear them. But I'm just telling you, I'm part of Amabutu, myself. And the king is my king. <clears throat> so how do I answer the question, how do I feel about it? No, that's not, that's not the question for me to answer, really. Okay. Is there anybody that has not asked a question? Uh, this is a former president. What's going on to my phone? I will just read the same note too. Uh, I just have one question. Do you feel that any of the justices that have to deal with the decision application, uh, do they all part of judges that are biased against you? Um, and do you think that if they, if they are, then they should recuse themselves? No, I, 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 I've never had that feeling, not at all. <clears throat> and I can't decide who comes in. And I can't, before people come in, say, when I don't come in, because of a bias. No. Why should I do so? Okay. <clears throat> really. Right. We're going to close in a minute. This will be the last hand because we've had the question before. Right. Is there any other question? Yes, uh, my, my question to the president is, he says he agrees with the minority judgment because it was dispassionately objective and consistent with the Constitution. But those very judges agree with the majority that you are guilty of contempt, but only differ on the sentence. Do you also accept that you are guilty of contempt with the president? My brother. <laughs> you want me to judge myself? <laughs> you, you know, you know why I say so. Because you don't know why I take that decision that I took. In other words, for the contempt of court to come about, I did not just decide to say I'm now don't want to hear you. You are in this country, you know there was a background to that. If perhaps you were asking, <clears throat> you do think this was a correct decision, whatever. But to say, do you, because you say those judges were fired, I was just, just saying, they did not hear me, even those judges. But I was comparing, and this was a comparison, that the, the, the minority had a better a, a, a explanation or judgment they made about this case. Of course, they still believed that uh, contempt is not right, but they've never questioned me why I, 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 I took that action. So why should I say now, because it is just called contempt, then I'm guilty, not at all. <laughs> not at all. I had reasons why I took that decision, and I'm sure you read my statement. Because my feeling is, even if you are a judge, you can't undermine the law. And you have never heard me arguing that one. 
So the question is not fair because you want to judge me, you want to feel these are good. I, we were appreciating their reasoning in terms of the judgment, how they feel about it. That's what we're dealing about. We did not deal with the issue that they were actually correct to say I'm guilty on contempt. I didn't say so. Mm. Breaking news. All right, well, no, just clarity on this um, legal point. Um, Advocate, I just want to know something. The inquiry says the court has no jurisdiction to hear this case and should dismiss it outright because only the consul can stay its orders for the prison's arrest. The court agrees. Does this then, do you then accept that the former president must be arrested by ONZ? Otherwise, the police will be in contempt. Um, again, as I said, oh, before I do that, I just wanted to introduce the other members of the legal team, Advocate Olu and Advocate Butelezi, and stand up, and Mr. Tusini. Thank you. All right. Um, my brother. <laughs> I have said that I'm not going to discuss the merits of the cases here. I can assure you that whatever defenses are raised in those documents will be debated in court on Tuesday, and I'm sure you will be there. <laughs> I've explained to you it would be unfair to now start arguing the case here in front of the media when the opponents are not here. They have raised their legal issues. We've raised our legal issues. I was just asked uh, by the former president to come and answer those questions that uh, deal with the legal uh, cases. Um, and that's, it was on that basis that we obtained uh, permission. But if we now stray into the merits of the cases, it would be completely wrong and unfair and beyond the permission that we have. Please bear with us. It's only two days. All issues that are raised by us, by other people, by the court, by everybody, even the pseudo-analysts and uh, uh, lawyers who, who have a view, will be answered in court. Please, I hope you, you understand that. Thank you. We're going to close this now. I'm just going to give the lady a chance, and then we'll close. Thank you. Um, I am Dong from the SABC. Maybe my question um, would be best answered by Advocate Bofo. Um Advocate, um, the Chief, um, Deputy Chief Justice back in um, the position of the Acting uh, Chief Justice. Now, come help. Just um, please help me understand this. Come um, next week, Monday. What would be the procedure? Would he have to recuse himself, or would you then, as the um, former President's legal team, would request that he recuse? Um, himself in the uh, Rohingya application. I ask this because in the in the uh, state capture matter, it was the former president had an application for him to recuse himself, and he listened to that application. How would it work in this instance? Yeah, you see, this is a characteristic of a press briefing gone too long, mm -hmm. because now we are no longer focusing on what the president had said, mm -hmm. or going into the cases and everything else. Let's hear what you have to say. <laughs> Alright, advocate will deal with the question of uh, conflict again and stuff. Did I see a very waving hand here? Well, we done. Okay. Okay, this. Yeah, it's, it's still working. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. wanted to ask, uh, Mr. President, should your um, application fail uh, this time again? Sorry? Yeah, should your application fail, will you consider going to, I mean, like approaching the ICC, the International Criminal Court? <coughs> No, now. <laughs> you want me to guess and speculate, and no, I'm not going to do so. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Okay, very quickly. There's the answer I will have is I will borrow from uh, uh, the former president. 
we will cross that bridge if and when we come to it. We cannot speculate. We don't know who's going to be sitting on the bench on Monday, and now we can say things. And my understanding of the statement of the uh, of the uh, Department of Justice was that Justice Zondo would continue with the commission. He, he was simply appointed to be acting Chief Justice. So I would be surprised if he will be there for any other reason. So I don't think it's it's appropriate to even. Uh, <coughs> deal with that. If it happens next Monday, well, we'll deal with it then. Okay. The reason the foundation has uh, allowed this questioning to go on longer is one way of apologizing for starting too late. Mm. So we thought we can't start too late and not even give you a chance to ask questions. Mm. And we've tried to give quality engagement one-on-one. Mm. -on -one. I think we've done all of that. And I must take this opportunity to thank you all for your discipline, and uh, clear questions, strategic questions, etc., etc., etc. Thank you very much. Um, keep watching the uh, Twitter handle of the foundation. That's where all the that's where all the information is going to come from. Right now, we can announce that on Tuesday we will be in Peter Marisberg Court on an urgent basis to stay the arrest uh, as it were. But all these issues around whether. There's a, a jurisdiction and what have you are matters that you will hear the advocate both arguing. I mean, other people, uh, some professors of law, <laughs> did not know that uh, you could rescind a constitutional court judgment. They didn't know this until advocate both. He's got a few things up his sleeves. Um, so wait for Tuesday and see uh, people that have not only studied law but have understood. Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> A very, very emboldened former president, Jacob Zuma, reiterating that he was not afraid of going to prison for his beliefs. And uh, he was at pains trying to clarify that he never refused to appear before the State Capture Commission, but uh, he also raised the defense of bias on the part of uh, Commission Chairperson, uh, the deputy. Access to the court for certain individuals and um, of note, uh, of particular note, he made the argument that detention without trial was like detention during the apartheid era when detractors can't even find a uh, you know, case number for his case and questioning why Judge Pile issued a warrant of arrest when he was too sick to go to jail. Those were live visuals coming out of Nganja uh, wherein former President Jacob Zuma addressed the media uh, you know, a few minutes ago and about a couple of hours earlier he addressed throngs of supporters outside uh, his uh, residence in Nganja in KwaZulu-Natal. This is The Globe on SAPC News. A very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Simpio